I am so excited for this video. I've been waiting for months for this feature to finally be enabled. And let me tell you, it is now in the beta, it is now official, and I present to you Confluence Whiteboards. Now this is, video is gonna be a little bit different, totally unscripted, and you're going to see my reactions. I've been waiting for this feature for months. I was there at the keynote at Atlassian Team 23 when they made the announcement. I had asked Atlassian that this would be something super, super cool if Confluence could do the day before, and the product manager there told me, keep an eye out because you're gonna be really, really excited tomorrow at the keynote, and boy oh boy did they deliver, and now here it is for the very first time I'm gonna be trying Confluence whiteboards. How does your team articulate their thoughts and ideas? Did you know that a picture is worth a thousand words? Let me introduce you to our exclusive sponsor for our Confluence videos, Gliffy. With Gliffy for Confluence, you can effortlessly create stunning flowcharts, mind maps, wireframes, and so much more, all directly from within Confluence itself. No more jumping to a different application or dealing with clunky integrations. Check out the link in the description below and start a free trial of Gliffy today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. And let me remind you that this is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series. So you smashing that subscribe button, which is completely free to you, is probably one of the most important things that you can do to support the channel. So just take a second here, smash the subscribe button now. All right, let's jump into this initial first reaction of Confluence whiteboards. Now I do have their documentation over to the side, so you're gonna be seeing me look over to the side quite a bit, because again, I'm just trying to learn this. I am literally just giving you my raw, never used it, never ever have I touched Confluence whiteboards in my life, and I just wanna bring you along with the journey so that you see what somebody who loves and does all things that last all day long, what they think about when they try something new for the very first time. So let's jump into Confluence, and I'm so excited. All right, so the first thing is, you're gonna obviously wanna get yourself into Confluence, and when you do that, you'll notice that your Create button looks a little bit differently. Now keep in mind, again, I have instructions and documentation on the right that I'm gonna be reading and referencing, so please be um, mindful of that and, and just try to ignore the fact that I'm gonna be looking over to the side. But your Create button should be very, very different, and now when you click on that Create button, instead of just creating a page, you now have options. You can still create your page and your blogs, but now if you're in the beta program, you now have this whiteboard which allows you to brainstorm, collaborate, and visualize work. And I am super excited for this because I am a huge supporter of Miro, and I'm excited to have it all in-house. I'm excited to have basically what I'm hoping is Miro-like capabilities within Confluence whiteboards. Now again, I am speculating, I haven't used it. This, this, is, this is what I hope it will do. Now this is not meant to replace something like your Gliffy, because Gliffy, can do some of the things that we're gonna talk about in the whiteboard, but Gliffy's use case is gonna be a little bit more specific. It's gonna be a lot more for diagramming, and it's gonna be a lot more for what I think is more like engineering type of diagrams, although Gliffy can do it all, but whiteboards is gonna be for those very quick, spur of the moment, just want to kind of, again, use Miro inside of Confluence. That's literally the best way that I can describe it. So let's see if it delivers. Let's see if it actually does that. So we're gonna click on whiteboard here, and here we are inside of a grid pattern. Now they have templates, this is cool. So they have a lot of different templates. Again, I'm getting very, very big mirror vibes here. Ooh, I love that we can do retrospective. Ooh, let's just do the retrospective one. I think this is really, really cool. One of the things that I see a lot of teams use Miro for is to do the retrospective because it allows everybody to kind of just put stickies everywhere. And so why don't we try that? Why don't we try to see if we can do like a mock retrospective here within the whiteboard functionality because you all know how much I love the, the retrospective templates in Confluence and I, I've always missed that whole like just being able to have that spontaneity and, and just serendipity of being in a conference room together and, and putting stickies on a whiteboard. It's super, super awesome. So let's see if we can kind of emulate that feeling and sensation inside of Confluence whiteboards. So immediately we are here inside of our simple retrospective. Now, this is kind of cool. Now, can I zoom in as easily? Yep, okay, so here's, again, very, very mirror-like vibes inside of this. Let's see if we can move around. So uh, just trying to figure out how to, how to paint with the shortcuts, but apparently you need to get a hand here. So you gotta hit H for the hand, and you hit V to select. So I'm just gonna be panning around with, with the hand here. 
and you can zoom in just like you can inside of Miro, which is really, really nice. I like that it just it's starting to look and feel very much like Miro, which again, I love. And we can see here that they give us some information on how to run a simple retrospective. This is really cool, little, little guide there. And then we got a link over here. So this is nice that we have an article so that they can basically teach us what a retrospective is, how to run it. Awesome, but we're not talking about retrospectives in this video. We're talking about the capabilities of the whiteboard. So here we are, a template already made for us, the good, the bad, the ideas and actions. And down below, as you can see, we have the sticky notes front and center. We have text, and then we have ellipses, lines. We have sections, import from Jira. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna wanna try that out. We have stamps and stickers, and then more tools. And under more tools, we have images, links, timers, and more templates. So let's just start off with the simple stuff. Let's start off with the sticky note. And I can actually bring in a sticky note, put it in the good section. Can I change the color of it? Now the interface here, not, not the best for me, right? So, because I immediately couldn't see that menu. So, and, and when I'm in the pan mode, I can't get to the, to select it. So here we are, uh, what kind of color? So one of the things that I don't like about Miro is the limitation of colors, but you got a good amount of colors. I think this is very much in line with Confluence's uh, design language. I would have appreciated though, having more like a hex type of thing where I can pick any color I want, but pretty good overall. You can resize it and then you can double click into it and start typing around. So the good, I finally got to use Confluence whiteboards. All right, awesome. And if I could spell finally, that'd be even better. Great, I can copy and paste them, put them in the bad. I'm learning, I, or I would have liked to have received access earlier little little shade at lasting because they don't they don't involve me in the eaps as best as i would like to be but anyway so it's that's that let's try out the text we can just type anywhere and this is some text you can make it again looks and feels basically just like the confluence way of doing stuff so this is interesting this is fun so if you've ever made a page in confluence it's going to feel very natural very out of the box uh, let's add some shape. So, okay, so thankfully, when you add a shape, you don't have to just accept the circle. You can actually pick different shapes. I kind of wish there were more shapes though. I, I think it would be super awesome to have different types of shapes. But again, now that's kind of where we start blurring lines between um, like tools like Gliffy, Lucidchart, and then whiteboards. Uh, we can do simple lines, so we can connect the line from here to here. And then we can change the types, the arrows. We can make it this kind of, uh, connector instead of just a line. So that's kind of cool. We can change the color of those lines. So that's that's really neat. Um, we can change the boldness of it. Not not too many items, but we can still do it. That's that's great. Okay, so basically this allows us to, to share very, very simple ideas. I wish I could exit this thing though. I, I don't like that I have to be changing around, but all right, works well enough, right? And, and yeah, so this, now this is a little buggy here though, cause this is not going away. I, I, I want it to go away. I'm done using it. I'm, I'm done interacting with it. So let's see if we can get it to go away by clicking somewhere else. There we go. Okay. So the, that's the shapes, that's your connectors. Now let's try to do the Jira integration. Let's import from Jira and we're just going to type in something from a Jira project. So let's go to our site so we can actually grab a site. Okay. And let's just bring in, I like that it's letting me know, although I don't know why it only picked this. I, I definitely know I have way more than these issues here. And so maybe if I pick a specific project, we're gonna be able to bring in more work. So let's just see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to pick a project here that I, okay, so I do have a lot of stories here. Um, it gives me a couple of pages. I can do a whole lot of them, 10 of them at a time, or I can just do one specific. Let's just do one first, see what that looks like. I can import the issue. And what I like is that it basically treats itself like a like a like a little sticky. So it's gonna be in here. I can see the status. I can click into it from what it looks like and take me back over to Jira. So this is really cool. I can then connect it with other items. I can put it in there like that. I can stick it inside of a one of these shapes, I guess, if I made the shape big enough. I can stick that in there like that. Um, so that's kind of cool though. This is really, really neat. Are you struggling to get your points across in a meeting? Have you tried showing your team a diagram instead? 
Glippy makes intuitive drag and drop diagramming software that helps teams of all types collaborate more effectively. Glippy's deep integrations with Confluence and Jira make it the leading Atlassian diagramming tool, allowing users to create everything from technical diagrams to describing software architecture to basic mind maps to capture ideas. Give our friends over at Glippy some love and start a free trial using the link in the description down below. This is what's kind of cool, right? You can visualize your Jira issues better because before your Jira issues were very much like in a tabular view inside of Jira. And even when you brought Jira issues into Confluence, you kind of saw them either in a table view or you saw them in a, like a just line item, but you couldn't do anything with it. You, you had to just accept that it was just there. But this one I can actually move around and let me see if I can zoom in a little bit because I understand that this is a little bit hard to see. So let me see if I can zoom in just a tad here so you can see this a little bit better. But if I pan this around and let me zoom in here, you can see that I have my Jira story. And again, I'm trying to just pan and I'm going to, I'm going to bring my story. I'm going to actually bring my stories over here because now what I want to do is I want to try to import a few more. So I'm going to bring in like three more, see what that does. And that brings them in all three, um, as three separate items. Okay. So that's cool. So even though they, they look like they were like in a table, I can move them around and I can put, so yes, yeah, so this is awesome because now I can start putting in some sort of um, like to do, right? I can start almost making my own mock roadmap type of thing, but using real Jira issues that are real, that are not like fake data. And I can start putting them in columns. I can put them in tables. I can pretty much do whatever I want with them. And most importantly, I can link them together. I can link them together here. And that's really, really awesome because now I can say, well, here's the order of operations. This one's got to be done before that one. And it's just going to give you an overall better visual representation of your Jira issues. And I think that's probably what I'm most excited about, right? Being able to bring in all these issues like this. Sorry, I, I totally messed that up and didn't show you. But all I did just for the video was I imported a bunch of issues here. I hit import and it just brought them in and then I can move them all as one group or if I click in any white space, I can just treat them all as individuals. And so that's really, really neat. And I can connect them together. So I can say these two are related. Now, what I kind of wish would happen here that I just didn't see happening correctly is I've already imported them. So I don't need to re-import them again, but let's just see what happens if I re-import them. Because I think this is a little bit of a, a miss actually, because once they're imported, right, I don't need two of these, like this is Jira Jan 40 and this one's Jira Jan 40. Like I don't, I guess I could see it as a good thing that you can, once it exists, maybe you want to bring a copy or not, like it's up to you. So I don't know. I personally would have like, once I bring it in, I, I, I'm using it. I don't need to bring it in a second time, but it's cool that you have that options. Um, so this guarantee you, I'm going to be exploring a whole lot more on this Jira integration. We got also stickers so we can bring in some stamps. Sorry, these are stamps. These are really cool because they look like stickers and we can basically leave your, oops, I actually clicked into a, an issue. So let's not do that. Um, but yeah, you can basically leave your mark everywhere and then you can put stickers and these are going to be facilitator stickers for yes, no, start, finish, open to work. Um, so yeah, these are really cool. Um, I like these. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm interested to see if at last is going to open up a whole new type of marketplace here with these whiteboards. But overall, my reaction here, because I don't want to make this video super long and I'm, I feel like I'm just rambling a little bit, but First reaction is it met the requirement. I, I feel like this is a oversimplified version of Miro, which is not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes Miro can do a whole lot and everything else. Keep in mind that this is still in beta. So I would expect that more functionality is going to be added to Confluence whiteboards over time, but they nailed the bare bones. They nailed the essentials. They nailed the reason why I would be in here, which is to communicate my ideas, which is to bring my Jira issues in, link them up and visualize Jira in a different way that previously up until this point was not possible. So kudos to Atlassian. Thank you for finally letting me into this beta program. And for everybody else watching this video, go and apply. There is a wait list that you can get onto to be able to enable Confluence whiteboards. I, I'm going to start playing with them a whole lot more. Highly recommend you try them out too, because like I said, just with the Jira view, game changing in my opinion, just being able to visualize those issues in this completely visual view is I think going to change the way people communicate and articulate the statuses and, and their life in Jira over in a much more visual way. Is your team having a hard time collaborating? Then you need to try out Glippy for Confluence. 
Collaboration has never been easier. Glyphy for Confluence allows your team to work together in real time, making edits, providing feedback, and driving productivity. Say goodbye to version control headaches and hello to seamless teamwork. Show our sponsor the power of the internet and start a free trial to Glyphy for Confluence using the link in the description down below. So that's it for this video. Keep in mind that this is part of the Summer of Alaskan 2.0 series. So smash the subscribe button, totally free for you. And all you gotta do is just click on that subscribe button down below and it drastically helps support the channel. Also make sure you drop a like and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns or your thoughts, I wanna hear your opinions. What do you think about Confluence Whiteboards? Are you in the beta program? What bugs have you found? Have you found any? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a